The views and opinions expressed do not necessarily reflect those of Access for Wayne, the Allen County Public Library, or any other supporting groups. If you'd like to produce a show, call us at 260-421-1250. Hello, this is Patty Hunter. Welcome to my show, Patty's Page. Today, on Skype, I'm doing an interview with Susan Akulak. I do believe that's how you pronounce it. Akulak. Akulak. So, uh, yes, she's an Inuit from the north in Canada, and she's li now living in Toronto. So. This is going to be a great interview, a whole half hour, and there'll be a song, a video at the end called OCM. So, see you in a moment. Hello, this is Patty Hunter of Patty's Page, and I'm welcoming my special guest, Susan Arkelok. How do you spell that? How do you say uh, that? It's pronounced Aglukark. Aglukark. Aglukark, yeah, so phonetically U G H, Aglukark. Aglu Park. Aglu yeah. Park. That's a nice name. I like that. Thank you. What does it mean? Does it have a meaning to it? or? Well, it does and it doesn't. My father says it's my dad's traditional name. Um, and uh, he says he doesn't recall it ever being assigned uh, a, dis uh, a, a, a meaning. But um, when you break it up, Aglu uh, means two things. Aglu could be taking a step forward, mm -hmm. uh, but Aglu also in in is the seal hole. Ah, yeah. So when when a, when a hunter is waiting for a seal, they're waiting at the Aglu. Uh, Aglu kak means uh, takes big steps, or that's a big seal hole. So it depends what context you're using it in. Like hunter is uh, like a hunter. No. Yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, you were born in. Arviat? No. No, I was born in Fort Churchill, Manitoba. Manitoba! Manitoba. I always say that I'm a Manitoban by default. And what I mean by that is, uh, as is the case in many of our northern reserves, at the time that I was due, my mother had to be shipped to oh. the closest hospital because our communities only have nursing stations. So where are you originally so, from? Where yeah, she so from? she had to fly to Fort Churchill to have me, and then we went back to Akvit, where I grew up. Akvit. That's where your mom was from then? Yes. Yeah. Uh, so uh, how far north is that from? Is that on, near Ontario or Quebec or? Um, well, uh, it's directly north of uh, the Manitoba border. I would uh. say probably about, uh, about a 30, 40-minute plane ride. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so oh. I don't know what that is in kilometers or mileage, but it's about a 30, 40 minute plane ride directly north of the Manitoba border. I bet, I bet they were in a bush plane. Yeah. That's what I thought. In 1992, is that when you first started your singing or before that? No, I, that's correct. I started uh, singing professionally uh, at around that time. Uh, I'm one of seven children, preacher's mm. kids, so we sang in church, but aside from church singing, there was no singing per se. So professionally, I started singing back in the early 1990s. Um, but it's a it's a bit more of an involved story than that. Yeah. Um, okay. You know, at the time that I started singing professionally, I didn't consider myself a professional singer. It was not the pursuit of a career as a singer. Um, I was just. Um, I was really just dealing with a lot of crap in my life and mm. songwriting became an outlet and then by nature of, by extension from the songwriting became the singing so I became the singer of my song so in that way I became a singer um, but I had no set goal, preset goal of pursuing being a songwriter 
as a career. It's just become what it has uh, over a series of happenstances and, uh, and falling in love with it. Mm. And it's been what I've been doing for about 25 years now. Mercy for heavens. And it's seven albums. You're working on another right now, or? Yeah, technically, I'm working on my tenth album. Tenth. Um, the first two albums. Uh, the first one was a little cassette recording called "Dreams for You." Yeah. And the second, um, technically third album, was the first Christmas album I did back in 1991, 1992. Those two are no longer manufactured, um, so they're considered uh, albums, but no longer man they're no longer available to be bought commercially. Okay. Uh, so technically, I'm doing my 10th album right now. So we have technically eight albums that are going to be available. Mm -hmm. um, but again, as a course of um, matter, of course, the more you fall in love with something, the better you get at it. And when I listen back to my old recordings, I cringe and think, oh my god, I don't think I should be selling that recording anymore. So... <laughs> You're We're learning up the shelf. <laughs> You're learning though, as you go on. I'm maturing. Yeah. Everybody's maturing, which yeah. you are, and yeah. your your songs are excellent. Thank you. Trivia. Um, I was going to ask you, um, why do you write these songs? I mean, is it about your people? Is it about you? What? Um, it it's about the people through me, and I am one of them, as an Inuk. That is my first language. Wow. I am Inuk and always will be. So it's hard for me to not to write a song and, it, and some part of it um, not be from the Inuit. Yeah. Uh, whether that be Inuit currently, Inuit during the transition phase, Inuit historically, our ancestors. There's always a piece of our people, my people, Inuit, in any of my songwriting. Um, and the thing of, of, the, of the privilege as a songwriter is we're living in some pretty incredible times as an indigenous community, but mm. specifically as Inuit. There's so much to write about that no matter how many times I start a song that might be a personal thought, right. it always inevitably comes back to, oh, this came from that experience in small town Nunavut, or this came from that conversation with that elder or something. It always goes back to the culture. Um, so in that way, um, songwriting is always about Inuit. Um, and as an Inuit, um, it will always come from myself as an Inuk. I'm very proud of you. Thank you. And um, you say you're falling in love with creating your music. Mm -hmm. So do you have collaborators or? I, I have this time around um, with this new project we are working on, um, finally had the courage to uh, invite collaborating mm. um I, I you know any creative process is a very uh, very introspective personal process i've always had trouble uh, inviting people into uh, my personal circle when i'm writing a song yeah um, only because i'm constantly editing myself if i write a line i'll take a look at it a million times before i put it on paper it's like okay well that makes sense but doesn't make sense to anybody you know all that stuff goes on in your head so it was always very scary. It still is to a degree to invite co-writers or collaborators mm. into that circle. It's a very, mm. very personal circle. Um, and I've met a couple of wonderful people um, that I trust implicitly uh, to include in that circle. Uh, and so we are working together on a couple of songs that may or may not be on the album. Mm -hmm. um, like but singles? certainly the first time in this career that I've felt comfortable enough with myself oh, yeah. to collaborate with other songwriters outside of my relationship with my producer. So with your music, um, you have won awards. What did you win? Three Junos. Yeah. I'm happy. I'm happy. I, I'm really uh, proud of that you're that people in our own country, I'm from Canada, Ontario, eh? Right. 
uh, recognizing your singing and your message, like a mission that you're on, sounds like it anyways. Mm -hmm. And uh, you also received the Order of Canada in 2005. How did that feel? Um, I, I think I would, I would have to say that definitely the first Juno was the first time that I felt like I had reached a point creatively where I felt like I earned it. Yes. Um, and that's the same case for the Order of Canada. When we got the invitation, um, it, it was an invitation to accept it. You're given the option. Uh, obviously, any award, it's, 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 you don't have to accept all the awards you're offered. Yes. Um, but certainly the Governor General Award. Um, I, I was really humbled by the, the, um, the recognition. Uh, but I, you know, I, I think a lot of us artists feel like um, we just love what we do. And we love who we become. Um, in the process of our work and by nature of the work that we do we become social activists and yeah. we don't do any of this for recognition no so when we get the recognition we're kind of like okay but there's so many more people who are working just as hard if not harder uh, and I, I imagine a lot of us think those thoughts they there's more people than me doing more work and 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 more deserved of these recognitions that's normal yeah that's normal. Uh, so when the order of Canada was offered I, I remember sitting down with my husband and I was thinking do we accept it like have I earned it <laughs> um, sure and then for a moment it was like okay you have to do this you're, you're going to accept this um, you have to learn to accept the flip side of these kinds of words, which is the responsibility of them. They don't, they aren't just given to you and there you go. Yeah. There's a responsibility that comes with these recognitions. And um, that became kind of the impetus towards my volunteer work. And so in that way, I was honored that a committee would look at my body of work up to that point and say, okay, she deserves this award because now it means, okay, well, I've graduated to the next level, whatever that next level is. So um, so in that way, I have always been honored by that award, uh, especially the Governor General's um, award. So you performed for the Queen? Yes, Her Some, uh, a couple of times. How old is she now? 91? Yeah. Oh, 91. Oh my God. What's she like? She's beautiful. She's a beautiful, very, very gentle woman. Yes. Um, <clears throat> I understand it. When I first met her about 25, 26 years ago, um, there's a lot of protocol involved. So you can't reach out, you can't extend uh, your hand, uh, you can't speak first. Right. Uh, you just stand and wait to be acknowledged. And if she reaches out her hand to, to shake you, then then you accept. You know, there's a lot of protocol involved. Um, I mean, what I do on a much, 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 much more micro, tiny little scale is exhausting. Right. Uh, because your life is very, very public. Yeah. Oh, um, yeah. I imagine hers and must be the life of the royalty, what oh. that must be like. So I get the protocol now. Uh, but other than that, I think she's at heart a very sweet, gentle woman. And that's the impression I got when I first met her. You are doing workshops now? I am. Um, Spain. They are, they are evolving. I started about... Um, Oh, about 12 or 13 years ago with a workshop series I developed called The Fifth Season. Oh, yeah. And the idea behind them was uh, to reawaken self-esteem in mm. our indigenous youth. Right. Uh, to bury, to un uncover the very deep, deep natural ability Inuit children, or uh, all children have with, with a connection to self-esteem. Yeah. Um, some, and, and then fast forward to what we do now. These have evolved into um, now I work with um, many frontline workers, many of our social workers, for example, uh, many are victims themselves of assaults and sexual assaults. And so mm. we're often working with professionals, yeah. uh, working the front lines who have their own trauma. Um, so and so you... now we're developing work and I've worked with them to, to help us reconnect with ourselves as healthy women. 
Uh, so it's it's a series of different workshops for different groups really underlying the reconnecting to ourselves as healthy, happy people. So where do you go with these workshops? Um, we go wherever we're invited. Um, United States or Canada? Or... Yeah, anywhere. Anywhere. We've been all over Canada with these workshops. I haven't had any invitations to work in the United States yet. Mm. Um, but we would certainly, I, I imagine, a lot of the tr struggles our Indigenous yes. people feel across the border are very similar to what we our challenges are in our own country here in Canada. So I think the same work would be very relevant uh, south of the border. So uh, absolutely, the work this work can be done in those communities. Right uh, now, but primarily, it's been here in Canada. Uh, m right now, the main uh, news is the pipeline in yeah. Dakota. Yeah. The, That's the, political work. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's and political activism. I do social activism. <laughs> 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 but uh, how often do you go on these uh, tours, you might say? Do you just sing or you just do your workshops or do you put them both together? Um, we can do both together. Um, what I've had to do is, um, in the past, I mean, as you can hear, I'm struggling right now with yeah, my I know. voice. I don't want to um, keep it And I know that my personal health is very connected to my personal and social, uh, cultural, spiritual health. Yeah. And what we try to explain to people is, please don't invite me to do a workshop and then ask me to do several songs. Oh, no. Those are two, com com the thing is, they are two completely different parts of the brain. Right. So I can't just um, switch gears and then yes. do a bit of an entertainment piece. That's right. Um, so what we've had to do is uh, we put this package together where we will do a series of workshops on a reserve in a northern community one day, yeah. uh, let's say late morning, early afternoon, and then I have to take a break for two or three hours. Yeah. And then we'll do an evening singing, speaking presentation for that community. That's good. Um, and we prefer to do it that way in one day uh, because the content and the source of the workshop is often uh, almost always connected to sexual abuse and specifically child sex abuse. So we're working with um, a real deep emotional connection and that in and of itself is emotionally exhausting. We're giving so yeah. much yeah. into the experience emotionally that you're going to be exhausted. So you need the break before you can switch gears and go and do a singing speaking presentation several hours later. So we've learned, I say we because my husband does all this work with me. You spoke with Jacques, yeah. I think it was this yeah. morning, and he's my sound man and he handles all of the logistics now. And we do all the traveling together and I, I, I really can't do this work without him anymore because you just get so exhausted. emotionally yeah. exhausted. You yeah. want to do the work, but you got to learn to take care of yourself. And that's how I've learned to take care of myself. Good. Did you know that I am administrative assistant to the founder of Three Rivers Art Center for Kids. Okay. And we are in here this uh, in Fort Wayne, Indiana, to show that abuse for uh, domestic abuse, child neglect is wrong, and we are fighting that. So right. you're not alone. We're right. doing the same thing down here. Yeah, that's that's uh, that's that's good to hear. Thank you for that, Patty. It is a lot of work, and it's a lot of emotional work that needs to be done. And you done. don't really get paid for it, do you? Not yeah. really. I mean, this is all volunteer with me, and I've been working for five years doing this. Hmm. So I know how you feel. So uh, I know that this getting on towards the end of the show, we'll be showing OCM. Let's talk about OCM. What's that about? Well, um, that was our first single off my first uh, major label album, This Child. Mm -hmm. And um, it was uh, inspired in a moment I think that will stay imprinted in my memory forever. Uh, it was a conference in Banff, Alberta, um, and we were at the head table, all the guest speakers, and there were two gentlemen who were guests from the Coast Salish Nation out in the West Coast. And they welcomed and they honored the guests. And so they did this gesture. Mm. 
and I was really touched by this. Um, I knew very, very little about um, most First Nations groups, mm. having grown up isolated, small town, Nunavut. So um, I approached them after this conference morning, and I asked about the word and the gesture, and what's the language, and could I use it in a song? And we were writing the album, This Child, so on the flight back to Toronto, where I was recording at the time, yeah, um, the song started coming together. Oh. Um, Honestly, I'm often asked, what's your favorite song to have written? I, I have to say, OCM will probably always be my favorite song, just because it was inspired from a very, um, very Elder. corrupted, personal place that was not connected to trauma. Oh, yeah. um, it was connected to the root of Indigenous people, which is love for family, and that's mm. really what the song was all about. We are all one. Yes. Right? Yeah. So, uh, I am so glad to have you on my show. We're going to show the video, OCM, which I don't know how long it took to make. But now, three days. Three days? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah. So, merci beaucoup, Maiden. And uh, I hope to uh, connect with you again. Would that be okay? Absolutely, Patty. Anytime. I consider you a friend. And you too, Patty. Peace be with you, and God bless, and may the Creator be with you and, and Jacques. So, uh, we'll see you. And okay, thank you. Catch you later, my friend. Okay. Bye-bye, dear. us all